everyone. Thank you so much for tuning in and welcome back to DIY Design by CCW. As you can see, I am going to be doing a DIY for you today. Now, I have these Dollar Tree pieces. I have a thrifted vase and I'm going to do a vanity or mirror tray for you today, but something very different and I hope you like it. I have these, uh, this acrylic disc, but I also have some mirrors uh, that I'm going to be working with. So again, something a little different, and I hope you like it. I'll be working with several different fabric trims and um, a little bit of everything today, really. Uh, I'll be using diamond dots, something I haven't worked with on my channel uh, in quite some time. Um, I'm also going to be working with crystals, and uh, I have some rhinestones uh, that I'll be working with, a uh, vase filler, rather, made by Ashlyn, but they're rhinestones, and uh, I'm even going to be doing a little Mod Podge for you today, and of course, I'm going to paint. Now, this today's color is teal. This is the first time I've worked with this color on my channel. This is a multi-surface paint made by Folk Art. I can't wait to see how it turns out. I did work with the aqua before, but uh, never the teal. All right, now I'm going to do, first thing I'm going to do is take these pieces uh, off camera, clean them with this alcohol, and I'll be right back. We're going to jump right into today's video. Now, what I've started to do uh, with painting to make it a little bit easier for myself and a little bit easier to clean up, also I find that I waste a lot less, is I mix the paint in these disposable cups, use a spoon to disposable spoon to, to uh, stir the, uh, stare the paint, and uh, then I get right into painting. Now again, uh, if you're new to the channel and you haven't seen me do this before, painting glass is really easy, but you really do want to follow some steps so that you get a nice finish. Now, this multi-surface paint that I'm using today, as you can see, if you've watched me paint uh, glass before or if you've done this yourself, this paint is a, has a, a lot um, more pigment to it and that first coat goes on great. Now, I do still come back and do a second and a third coat, but some of you may do this and be very happy with the first coat, especially if you want a slightly translucent uh, look to your piece. Now, here again, I'm using an acrylic brush or a brush that's made for acrylic. Uh, I don't spend a lot of money for these brushes. I buy them from Joanne Fabrics, Walmart, um, you know, but the main thing is that the brush needs to be uh, made for acrylic. Now here I'm just painting my little Dollar Tree uh, piece. Um, I really like these. This is the second time I think I've made one of these pieces over. Again, it's just a little Dollar Tree soap container, and I'm going to see if I can make it into something special. So again, just going nice and easy with the paint, uh, making sure that this first uh, coat goes on, you know, as even as possible, keeping those brush strokes as even as possible. And then, like I said, off camera, I'll come back and do a second and a third coat.
So now as I'm finishing this piece, I'll show you what I do to keep the paint uh, moist and the brush moist in between coats. Just seal it up in a plastic bag. That way I don't have to keep uh, brush, you know, rinsing brushes and uh, the paint stays great. And I can come back and do my second and my third coats. All right, so now I'm going to start putting together the mirror. So if you watch uh, my channel, you've seen me make these trays tons of times. I absolutely love them. I use them in my home. Uh, I give them away as gifts. I just think they're beautiful. And uh, I like that you, you know, being creative and, and just kind of do, doing something unique. So the first thing I'm doing is gluing two 12 inch mirrors together. Now, the reason I do that is if I decide to place this mirror on top of a mirrored or reflective surface, I like the bottom of the mirror to be mirror as well. Now that's not something you have to do, uh, but again, that's typically how I do it. Now here you see, uh, I am going to start gluing on my floral rings. Now the mirrors, I glued those together with my E6000 Quick Hold, but for these floral rings, and again, you can pick these up from Dollar Tree or any craft store, they're very inexpensive. Um, now for these rings, uh, what I'm using to attach them is regular E6000. That way I get a very secure hold. I'm going to place uh, a ring on both sides of the mirror, then uh, attach clamps and sit it aside. Uh, and then we'll come back and move on to the next step. All right, so now that I've placed uh, the rings on both sides of the mirror, uh, the double mirror, uh, and I've made sure that, you know, they're set in place, I'm gonna go ahead and glue on uh, my legs. Now, if you're new to the channel, you wouldn't know this. If you follow the channel, you've seen me do this a ton of times, but I love to use crystal knobs for the legs for my trays. Um, they look beautiful. They're inexpensive. Um, I do sell them in my Amazon shop. Uh, also, you can get them at Home Goods. Again, lots of different places. Um, but one box goes a long way. Uh, they come in multiple shapes. You can get them in brass. You can get them in gold. You can get them in silver. They're just beautiful. And um, again, I did glue them on with the regular E6000 glue to get a nice strong hold. And uh, now, uh, as I said, I'm doing something a little bit different with this tray. So here you see I'm gluing a 10 inch ring in the middle uh, of the tray. And I'm doing that with E6000. Um, and then once I get that, that glued in place, here you see I'm placing the Ashland um, rhinestone filler that I showed you at the beginning of the video and just basically placing that around uh, the outer part of the mirror. Now, the reason I put the ring in the middle is I don't want the uh, rhinestones to slide around. I want them to stay in place. Now, I didn't measure when I put this ring in the middle I'm okay if it's just slightly off center, 
But if you want to make sure that it's absolutely perfect, then of course you should measure and make sure that uh, you have the same width all around. Um, and here again, I'm just filling in all the empty spots. Um, you know, this Ashland uh, rhinestone filler, one side is rhinestone or clear rhinestone and the other part is silver. And I kind of like to mix it up so that uh, there's a little bit of silver as well as uh, some of the rhinestone showing. Now you may want to flip all of them upside down or right side up so that you have all, uh, you know, all the, uh, the uh, rhinestone or the diamond look showing through the mirror. Um, but this is the way I decided to do it. And I think I like how it turned out in the end. All right, so now I'm going to glue on another ring on top of the ring that I've already glued around the edge. And the reason is I need just a little more height, a little more space before I add the top layer to the mirror. Uh, so that it will be, you know, so that I can get it to lay down. Now, you could do this look with crushed glass, too. I think this that would be really pretty. In fact, I think I'm going to try one. Um, you can get the crushed glass in multiple colors, and I think it would be pretty and be very different. So I'm going to see if I can use some, make another one of these using some crushed glass. So again, once I put the second... Uh, mirror or rather the second floor ring on uh, now you see I'm just adding a little bit more of the E6000 quick hold and then I'm going to glue on my acrylic disc now again these discs again you can find them in my Amazon shop uh, they, I order mine on Amazon they're very inexpensive in fact I got two for I think ten dollars um, you know, and again, I make, I use them all the time. So very affordable, very sturdy. There you see, I just basically placed the acrylic on top. Uh, then I'll use my clamps to hold it down. Now, once it sets, then I'll remove that other layer of film from, uh, the, uh, top side. And then we'll move on to the next part of the assembling the mirror. So now that I've removed the top uh, layer of film, I'm going to go ahead and glue on one final ring. And then this will go uh, around the very top of the mirror. And uh, once that's done, um, I'll be able to come back or I'll come back and then we'll go ahead and add uh, some trim to the outer part of the mirror. All right, so now it's time to add the rhinestone trim. I'm going to be working with uh, a, the, a beautiful trim that I use quite a bit on my channel. I've already cut uh, the trim into two uh, strips. Um, it comes in rows of six rhinestones, little miniature rhinestones. And I did measure it for the tray and cut it in half. And I'm going to place half around the top or the crystal uh, the uh, sorry the acrylic layer of the tray and then I'll place the other half on the bottom edge to hide the edge of the two mirrors that I glued together. Um, I'll also add uh, a little bit of rhinestone two millimeter rhinestone um, trim um, rhinestone <clears throat> excuse me um, in the middle as well and uh, closed chain wrap is what I meant to say in the middle of the tray 
uh, kind of where the two um, rings that I connected in the middle to basically add a little more height, I'll kind of add that rhinestone trim there. And then once I do that, uh, this mirror is going to be done. I will say this mirror is really sturdy. Um, I think I'll get a lot of use out of it with the acrylic on top and then the way the mirrors are layered on the bottom. It just, you know, it's really a substantial, substantial piece and uh, I'll get a lot of use out of it. But again, I think I'm going to make another one and I'm going to try it with crushed glass and maybe play with some color and uh, we'll see how it turns out. So now I'll go ahead and seal the paint on the pieces that I just painted. Uh, there you see I'm using uh, this beautiful uh, sealant made by Folk Art. I'll, again, I'll make sure to link that down in the description box. Um, what I've learned to do with the sealant is to apply it either with a brush, and here you see I'm using a sponge applicator. Um, I think the bottle is about $17, but I've been using it a while and I've barely touched it. I mean, it just a little goes a long way. Um, initially, I was spraying the sealant on and then I learned that the best way to do it is to apply it this way. Now, you'll see when this, when this is dry, uh, the sealant is gloss. The paint itself uh, is a satin finish but when you combine the two, it's absolutely beautiful. Now, this particular paint, this um, multi-surface paint, it says it doesn't have to be sealed. You can let it air dry for 30 days and you should be fine. Uh, you can also fire the paint in the oven and uh, get it to you know seal immediately. But I've started using this sealant on all of my painted pro all of my projects whether it be uh, the you know the metallic paint or this multi-surface paint and I've really been happy with it and if I'm going to go ahead and do a little something extra obviously I love to add some embellishment maybe glue on some trim I have found uh, that the piece you know the paint stays perfect it doesn't chip also, if you want to make the piece so that you can immerse it in water, this is the way to do it. Again, very inexpensive. One bottle goes a long way. Once this is done, I'll set the pieces aside, let them dry, then we'll come back and move on and I'll start adding some embellishments.
before I start the embellishments, uh, I thought I'd just show you really quickly how to remove the backs of the brooches. Now, um, I use brooches all the time on my pieces. I love them. I love uh, to have a focal point. It's kind of my signature look. And uh, I buy brooches all over the place, but these particular brooches came from Walmart. And really, just I just use wire cutters to remove the back. That way, the brooches will lay flat. Now, I'm starting off with the Dollar Tree soap container. The first thing that I'm going to do is just add uh, some fabric trim. Now, I'm working with two of my favorite favorite uh, rhinestone fabric trims. They both come uh, from Joann Fabric. I'm going to cut them down to size and then uh, place them on both sides of the soap dish before we move on, or the soap container rather, before we move on to the next step. So now 
I'm going to work on the front side of the soap container. Now, actually, the first time I made this piece or used this piece, um, I did leave the embossed letters uh, showing on the front and uh, basically just used the uh, uh, two millimeter closed chain wrap to kind of, like I'm doing now basically, to just kind of go around the edge uh, uh, of the front of the piece but today I'm doing something a little different. What I decided to do is I decided I don't want the embossed letters to show so instead I'm gonna make the front of the piece the back of the piece and I'm gonna do something else uh, to what is now the back and kind of make it the front. So there you see, I glued on, there's a little ridge area in the front of the piece and I glued on uh, some of the uh, two millimeter closed chain wrap and then I'm going to use Mod Podge. Now here, I'm just kind of working inside um, and there you see me pouring out the Mod Podge, again, using those wonderful disposable cups from the Dollar Tree. Uh, I'm pouring out the Mod Podge, and then once I do that, get my gloves on, I'll go ahead and start applying it. Now, what I'm going to do with this Mod Podge is basically fill in the area where the embossed letters, you know, are. And um, <clears throat> that way you won't be able to see them. And I'm going to do that by adding, once I get the Mod Podge in place, I'm going to use Diamond Dots. Now, I used to work with Diamond Dots a lot on my channel. I haven't worked with them lately, but they're really inexpensive. They're about a buck, maybe a buck and a half. And they're just miniature rhinestones. Now, typically they use them for art. Uh, and you know you can get them in different colors, but again, I use them for my DIYs. And I found that the best way to secure them is to just use the Mod Podge. You want to make sure that you use the Mod Podge gloss. And then once this dries, I'll come back and go over it again with the Mod Podge uh, spray sealant to make sure that they stay in place. And uh, now, this uh, rhinestone that you're looking at, this part, will actually be on the back of my soap container, and I'm going to add uh, a brooch to the front to match the other pieces. So for the Dollar Tree uh, cylinder or container, as well as the thrifted base, I'm going to basically follow the same theme. Uh, you'll see here uh, that I'm just going to be adding some trim, uh, working with my E6000 Quick Hold uh, to secure the trim and, uh, you know, following the same design. And um, I, I think I like how the pieces turned out, but you let me know uh, what you think. Now again, you see there around the top uh, edge of the, the uh, Dollar Tree piece, I'm using this faux uh, leather trim to accent, you know, just right below where the lid is going to go. And uh, again, I'll do the same look for both this piece as well as the larger piece. Uh, basically just, you know, the scale will be a little bit different.
before we get to the final reveal, of course, I'm going to make lids. If you're new to my channel, guess what? I make lids for everything. Those of you that follow the channel, you already know that. Um, but for this particular DIY, I'm going to use these acrylic discs. Again, these discs are available in my Amazon shop. I'm using a three inch disc as well as a five inch disc. And uh, basically you wanna leave the outer protective uh, wrap or cellophane uh, on uh, the uh, disc when you're applying the trim. Here you see I'm just gluing on uh, some uh, two millimeter closed chain wrap. Now once I get the, the wrap on, I'll remove the protective uh, outer uh, layer. And then once I do that, there you see, I've gone ahead and glued on crystal knobs. These knobs again are knobs you can find in my uh, Amazon shop or you can purchase them from Home Goods. They sell them everywhere. Now for the larger lid, I'm going to glue on some of these uh, uh, hand cut crystals and then there you go. This is the final, the finished look. That's what the tray looks like. There's a close up of the set with the tray. Um, you know what? I think I do like how this turned out. But again, let's take a closer look at everything. There's another look at the tray. It's very different than the, uh, the trays that I typically make, uh, but I really like it. Let me know what, what you think. Um, I think I'm going to get a lot of use out of it. Again, it's very sturdy um, and I can use it as a display tray, a perfume tray. Um, there I'm showing you kind of both sides of the Dollar Tree container so that you can see how the front and the back look. There's a close up of the Dollar Tree container and the thrifted container with the lids. Um, overall, I'm happy with this DIY. I love the colors, but again, love to hear from you. Let me know what you think. Guys, that's all I have for you today. If you haven't subscribed to the channel and you like this kind of DIY, I hope that you'll decide to do that today and visit my other channels. I've left links to them in the description box. Again, thanks again for watching. I hope to see you in the next video. Have a wonderful day or night. Bye-bye.